So I have some exciting news. I finally got my package in the mail. This big old package here contains all of the fine art prints that I ordered uh, for some of my paintings and some of my digital art. And it actually came a couple of days ago, but I waited till I had a moment where I could film unboxing it just because I wanted to share uh, what I was unboxing in my YouTube vlog. So here it is, and I'm gonna go ahead and open it and see how they came out. So here they all are. Let's open it up and take a peek. So here you can see that they taped all of the prints between these two um, flats of cardboard here just so the prints don't get ruined. I printed through a company called iPrintFromHome.com. I saw great reviews for them online. So um, yeah, ready to open this up and see how all of the prints came out. So here are all of the art prints that I ordered. I'm really excited to go through and take a look at all of these and see how they came out. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take a peek. So this first one here is the Growing Wild art print. This is actually a digital illustration that I made. Um, I really love the way that this one turned out. I think the colors are super vibrant. I think that the detail work is really beautiful and it looks really crisp and clean against this white border here. Um, I think it really looks similar to how the colors look digitally. So yeah, I'm really happy with this one here. This one here is the Poppy Trundle painting that I made a while ago. Um, you can see here that they really captured the paint strokes, which I think is really beautiful, the amount of detail that you can see with all of the different paint strokes in the image. It looks really three-dimensional, which was the effect I was hoping to get um, in this painting. So I think that translates really beautifully. Um, the only thing is that I feel like it could have been lightened up a little bit. Maybe the colors came across as a little bit darker than I had originally anticipated, but overall I think it's a really beautiful print. And this one here is my hazy little flower print. I got this one in two different colors, and this is a digital illustration that I did as well. I feel like the digital illustrations really translate well uh, in the print. I think the colors are so vibrant. I think it's not really too dark. It's more realistic to the actual colors in the illustration. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy how these came out. I think they're just a fun little burst of color. They're really crisp and clean and they came out perfect. I really like this one here. I think it's so cute. I love how you can see all of the detailed work and the fact that you can still see the canvas under the painting. I think the colors pop so beautifully, the contrast of everything, um, my cute little peyote button cactus painting. Um, I really like the way this one came out. I'm really happy with it. Wow, I am also really impressed with this one. I just think this print came out so vibrant, so just so akin to like how I had originally done the illustration. Um, just the colors, just everything. It just came out so beautiful. Um, I'm really happy with this one. Honestly, I think this one might be my favorite so far. Just incredible detail and I just love the way this one came out. It really makes me want to turn all of my digital illustrations that I have that are comic book style into prints. So I really like this one here. I think it's really beautiful. This one was a big canvas painting I did for a friend a while ago. I mean, just the colors of it and the detail. I mean, it's really just very similar to how the actual painting was itself. And sometimes when you're printing, it's challenging to get true colors. Um, the colors that you used in the painting or the illustration and finding the same colors, brightness, etc., in your prints. So I think this one came out really beautiful. I think this one came out really good too, actually. I 
was a little worried about this one just because the pigments in the painting weren't as vibrant just because um, it's a watercolor painting. And so I actually enhanced some of the colors in a digital editing program. Um, and I was a little concerned how it was going to turn out, but I think that this really came out quite nice. I really like this. I think it's really clear. It's, um, yeah, I think this print is also fantastic. This one is the fortune framework painting that I made. This is a watercolor painting that I did. Um, I think this one came out really beautifully too. I think watercolor can sometimes be hard to translate as prints. Um, I think the vibrancy is really great here. The only thing is some of the details came out a little bit blurry um, compared to some of the other details, but overall I think it's really beautiful and really love how this one came out too. And then here is the final print that I had made. This is the Sugar Plum print. It's from one of my favorite paintings that I had done. The colors in the print are quite a lot darker than the colors that are actually in the painting. So if I order another set of this one here, I'm definitely going to be lightening up the, um, the image of the painting quite a lot in uh, my editing software before I submit it again. Here is a little side-by-side -side comparison. So here is the original painting that I had the print created from, and then here is the print itself. So overall, they are pretty different. However, I still think it's a great piece of art and I will definitely use it. So overall, I'm feeling really happy with how the prints came out. I am really excited to get those up into my art shop. I'm going to be taking some product shots of those later this week. And yeah, I'm just excited to do a little shop update. I think I'm going to be doing a shop update on Friday. Today is Tuesday, so I'm going to be taking shots of all of those and getting those uploaded just in time for that. Hello everybody! So I'm back in the studio today and I thought that today would be a great day to go ahead and wrap up my art prints that I have. Um, I went ahead and got this wrapping paper here. There's like a couple of different cool different designs and types. Constellations, glitter, some sheen ones. Um, and my whole idea was uh, that I had these pieces of cardboard that I had cut out into squares, the same shapes as my print, and I was going to put my own wrapping paper background over the top of these cardboard uh, sheets. And so that way, when I package up my prints, they have a little bit of uh, sturdiness behind them so they don't get damaged. And it adds a little fun little artistic flair as well. And here are some of the cardboard backings that I have. Um, I try to recycle when making art whenever possible. I think it's good if you have the opportunity to. Um, these I just ended up cutting from recycled boxes. I just cut out um, the sizes that I would need for this and I'm just going to be doing my own backings. It is also really, really hot here the last couple days. We're going through an extreme heat wave where I live. Uh, I think yesterday it was like 108, which is pretty unheard of for where I live. So I'm just trying to stay cool and hydrate and I hope y'all are doing the same out there. So I've also been working on these clay pins for a little while. Um, I recorded a little bit of that process throughout this video, but I didn't include too much footage just because I'm going to be making a separate video that is just the process of making the pins with like a voiceover. But I wanted to show you uh, the result and kind of difference between the pins that I just added um, a resin, UV resin over the top of, and then the ones that I haven't done yet. So I've done about half of them so far and uh, they're coming out really cute. So I just wanted to show you like the before and after the resin, um, which I have right now. So these pins right here are right before I add the resin coat. They came out so cute. I'm so happy with these. Um, so you can see they're kind of like a ma more matte um, here. And then these ones over here are actually uh, 
they actually have the resin coat on them. And you can see that they have that kind of like sheen and glisten and almost a cap capsule like over the top of them. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and resin all of these later this evening and then add the felt and add the cute little backings and uh, put these up in my art shop really soon. Everybody, what's good I have my cute little smiley cup here life is going pretty well at the moment I haven't really been in my studio that much lately to be honest I took about a month off or so from doing any extensive projects or even really from filming so I had some personal things going on in my life um, that kind of took a lot of my attention and I'm just kind of coming out of at the moment. So I kind of took this space for myself uh, to just heal and hibernate a little bit um, and try not to feel guilty about not being productive or super creative while I was going through it. And now I'm kind of feeling back to myself again, coming back out into the studio, excited to maybe start some new projects. But during that time, I did put in a little bit work on my big canvas painting. It's the one with the castle um, that's in the clouds. So I've been working on that for a while now and haven't made a lot of progress on it for some time. So I am happy that I kind of settled in, tuned down a little bit and got to do some work on that big canvas painting. And I also got a commission from a good friend of mine. Uh, I don't really have commissions open right now at the moment just because I would like to spend more time focusing on some of my personal art that I've been making. However, um, this is somebody I designed her business cards for. 
um, some labels for for her business and so it's kind of like an extension of a product of a project that we've been working on um, over the last couple years or so so I am excited for that so tonight I'm gonna be working on my little clay pins putting those in their little packaging sleeves uh, just in case I sell any online or if I do a table at an event I'm ready to just put those right up and I also wanted to show you a little bit of the progress I've been making on my painting so here she is, not quite done yet, but definitely coming along. I did a little bit of work on the castle here and yeah, it was just nice to kind of set into a groove and get lost in the painting. So I've really been enjoying my time working on this here. I also wanted to show you all something super sweet. Uh, a friend of mine, her name is Amanda, she gifted me a whole bunch of canvases and it was just so generous and thoughtful of her. She's going to be moving. So she went ahead and hit me up and was like, hey, you want these canvases? I was like, girl, you know I do. So I went ahead and picked those up. So I'll go ahead and show you what she gifted me. Here are all of the canvases she gifted me. I just can't even believe it. There's so many and they're in so many different sizes. It's just like a freaking miracle for real. I mean, it's so sweet and thoughtful. There's like these framed, inner framed ones. There's these just regular um, matte ones. There's big ones. There's square ones. There's rectangular ones. There's small ones. It's amazing and I'm so appreciative. It is so, so kind of her. And yeah, so big thank you, Amanda. I really appreciate you. And I'm a slow painter, so I'll be sitting on these for a while. So yeah, here are all of the canvases. And there is also a little ladybug on here. What are you doing, little guy? Where are you going? To a ladybug party? So these are the final product for the pins that I made recently, the clay pins. Um, I think they came out really cute. I'm really happy with how all of these turned out. We got our little disco ball and the snake and the little skull. And um, they all have these like backings that I attach to them. They're really sturdy. They uh, I put super glue on the back of them. Um, and then I also painted these little backing cards so I could just pop them into these here, put them in a little plastic sleeve. But yeah, I just wanted to show you all the final product. Um, I went ahead and added these on my Etsy shop and yeah, they just came out super duper cute. I'm happy with them and I uh, hope you enjoyed watching the little snippets I had from making them. For this segment of the video, I thought it would be fun to do a Q&A of some of the questions that I have received as an artist. Starting with question number one, what media do you work with and what is your favorite? I work in a wide variety of media. I love to paint and craft and everything in between. The media that I'm most comfortable with would be watercolors, acrylics, ink, and digital art. I have also been experimenting with clay, screen printing, resin crafts, and would like to improve my skills in sewing. My favorite media to work with is acrylic paint. The style of painting that I do translates really well through acrylics. It's vibrant, fast drying, and you can really illustrate complex detail with the paint. Acrylics really achieve my favorite visuals when it comes to painting. Who are some artists that inspire you? My most influential inspiration would be Kristen Luong. She is an LA-based illustrator and painter. She incorporates psychedelic colors, retro patterns with contrasting emotional imagery. Her work is playful, sensual, imaginative, and sometimes a little bit dark. Other artists that have really captivated me include Shauna Van Morick, an oil painter with candy colored tones, Sari Shryrak, a painter with complex color theory and interesting subject matter, and Valeria Velkova for her dreamy abstract landscapes. More recently, I have been inspired by artists on YouTube that provide insight into their creative process. Some of which include Radia Raman, Lee Alexson, Paloma the Peach, and Catnip Studios.
How do you overcome creative blocks? There have been many times in my life where I have felt creatively stagnant and stuck. I found that putting pressure on yourself doesn't inspire you, but often makes you feel stressed out and inadequate. Instead, I've been trying to redirect my attention onto something else that I enjoy. Creativity can often involve a lot of sedentary time, so sometimes doing something physically active can add balance to your life and reignite your creativity. Take time for activities that make you feel inspired and feed your innovation. Live music, cooking, spending time with people that you care about, other hobbies that you enjoy. If we push ourselves to be creative machines, we'll inevitably experience burnout. Making art is much more fulfilling when you want to do it, not because you feel like you have to. Another way to realign with your creative wisdom is to tap out of social media for a period of time. We have so much content at our disposal. We see endless work in the blink of an eye, and it's easy to place our worth on algorithms and audience reach. When you find yourself comparing and lost in the chaos of content, pause, disconnect, and reconnect with why you love creating in the first place. Also, when I feel that I'm getting wrapped up in the perfection to the point of paralysis, I try to engage in simple art exercises such as doodling, quick sketches, or following simple art illustration prompts. Where did you learn painting skills and technique? I am mostly a self-taught artist, though I gain much insight from observing a wide variety of techniques from other artists and incorporating them into my own unique style. Creativity was encouraged in my life growing up and I used imagery as a form of expression and escape. So much of my work is built upon practice and trial and error. I'm always learning and improving and definitely have my strengths as well as my weaknesses. There's so much artistic knowledge available to us these days that I just lean into what I already know and feel comfortable with and do my research when I want to advance my skill set or learn something new. I use the internet, books, cartoons, works of art, and daily observation as a resource for improvement. I still have so much to learn and I'm excited to see how it will shape my future work. I would really like to take more hands-on art classes in the future as I really feel that can advance your technique quite noticeably. Learning new methods of self-expression has always really captivated my attention. So I really just learn as I go and that ultimately changes the outcome of my artwork over time. So I finished up those pins, which is good to finally like tie a ribbon on that because I've been working on those pins for quite some time now. And I think I'm gonna go get some rest. It's starting to get a little bit late. I'm also going to the art museum with my boyfriend's mom. She invited me and that is gonna be super fun. It's sweet of her to reach out and ask to take me. Um, I'm going to the De Young Museum which is in San Francisco. So I'm really looking forward to that, looking to be inspired and go take a peek at some different um, art exhibits. And I also think I'm going to be starting on that commission in the next couple days. I wanna make sure I can get that going soon just so my friend is able to get her labels made, uh, start manufacturing her products. So I'm going to be working on that in the next couple days as well. I'll take you guys with me to the art museum and then uh, show you what I come up with for this art commission as well.
everybody so <laughs> i went to the art museum uh with my boyfriend's mom gail she invited me she is also an artist so she thought it'd be fun if we went together and i had a great time um really makes me realize like how much art I consume online and social media. It's really nice to be able to just be in a physical space surrounded by art and to see it in person, to see all the different textures and colors and everything. It was a really great experience and I really need to get out and go to like museums and exhibits and things more often. I had a really great time. here is the first label sorry if there's like a little bit of a glare in the computer screen here but um yeah I did this like gold this like rich gold trim for a lot of the letters and the border with this cream background and then I did little pops of purple color which kind of matched the um, little pops of purple that are inside of the passion flower in the center of the logo so my friend really likes how all the colors came together in this label so I'm going to go ahead and create the other labels using the same color scheme. Hello! So I did just finish designing the labels. I think they came out really cute. I really like the color scheme. I think they look really clean and professional and I can't wait to see how they look once they're actually on the bottles themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and show these to you right now. Um, I made six labels in total, two different sizes for each design. There's three designs. Um, each uh, tincture has different ingredients, it does different things. So I'm gonna go ahead and show those to you right now. And here they are, the deep sleep tinctures right here. These are the bittersweet digestive elixirs. And this one is the Holy Rose Sacred Heart Elixir right here. You should definitely go and peep her stuff if you are interested in herbal products. So I decided to do a little bit of work out in the studio tonight. Over the last couple of days, I've been working on editing my clay pin video. And yesterday I just got that uploaded onto YouTube. I had a lot of footage from that actually. I ended up filming quite a lot of the process. So it took me a little bit of time to edit that. Yeah, if you wanna check that out, that is now on my channel. It just goes over how to make my handmade uh, clay pins that I paint um, that are also resin coated. And and also over the last couple of days, I've just been working on just reorganizing my studio. The space felt a little bit stagnant and cluttered. So I just kind of like rearranged some stuff and did some cleaning in the space. Um, I'll go ahead and show you a peek at what it looks like. So here is the space. I hung up a little bit more art, rearranged a few things been thinking about making some curtains in here as well and probably painting these beams also. I also finally got all of my canvases organized which feels good and I also bought myself a heater for my studio because it was getting cold out here. It's still pretty cold as you can see it's like 56 degrees in here but um, hopefully this will be able to warm up the space and make it a little more cozy out here. So I actually just signed up a couple of days ago to vend an event and do a little art booth, like a pre-holiday art booth type thing. I'm really excited. I Every time I've done vending, it's just been such a good experience. I love connecting with people and like sharing my artwork and seeing people's reactions and just making those real life connections through art. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm actually going to create a separate video for that and I think I'm going to be wrapping up this uh, vlog. But I also just wanted to show you all um, this painting that I'm going to be turning into stickers. I made this painting 
probably about a half a year ago or so, um, but I haven't done any prints or stickers or anything with it, so I wanted to show you all what it looks like. This is the painting that I did a little while back. I really love this painting. I actually had it in a show um, at the beginning of the year, and it's on a wood panel, and I thought it would be fun to make stickers of this painting and include them in my booth that I'm going to be vending at. So I'm going to go ahead and order those tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. I was also just kind of looking around my art room and seeing like what I thought would make a nice sticker. And then I saw this painting hanging on the wall that I did of a Doberman here. And I haven't made prints of this yet either or stickers. So I think I'm actually going to be adding these to the cart and making stickers as well. I have my two files right here that I worked on and edited in my Illustrator program. This one over here, the Doberman, I cut out. And then this one I'm going to remain intact and I'm going to find some cool sticker materials on this sticker app printing website that I usually use to make my stickers. I went ahead and uploaded my stickers onto the sticker app website. This is my favorite place to order stickers for my shop. These are three inches by three inches and I got a glitter effect on the rainbow, on these little twinkles here, on these little psychedelic waves. Um, on the water droplets as well as the little roses that are on the goat's crown. Thank you. 